It's funny. I actually didn't think much of Helena until just now. She is an incredible person. She's very tough, in fact. I like that. She was able to stand up to that dude. He's an ass. All right, before I continue on, hold on a second. There's blood on the floor. Cupboards. The tableware is coated in dust. Stone oven. An old clock hangs on the wall. Doesn't seem to work. What else is new? They're filled with miscellaneous items. Okay, okay. Right, 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 right. Let's save. All right. You and me, Mr. Boogeyman. Here we go. Not gonna show me the painting. Oh, I heard that. I go left or right? Nope, there's a staircase over there. What's over here? Oh, it's the other side. Got you. Alright. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, right? All oh, the gates open. Interesting painting. What's here? Alright, let's go. Ignore it. Wait, what's up there then? Like, what's the difference? Alright, I'm, I'm so confused. I, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll check it. I'll check each room. It really doesn't matter to me. In a ring still? No? Yeah. Oh, I unlocked the. Oh! That's what you were. Huh. <laughs> okay. That was so weird. Okay. And the door opened again. Come on. Where are you going, dude? I hear you. I hear you. Making me climb up these steps, and I'll beat you up even more for that. I'm a tired detective. Wait, Dad! Leave the door open, and don't turn out the lights in the hall. Why? The boogeyman will come! What kind of guy is this boogeyman? He has long nails and kidnaps kids. He lives in the closet. A kidnapper? Well, can't leave a guy like Dan loose. Alright, Dad, give him a good beating. Hey, Boogie, you in there? What the? Hey, let go! Dad? Dad! Oh, he was a little tough. I got him good. No worries, son. Old Boogie won't come for you anymore. Really? Would I lie? Me and Mom are in the bedroom right there, you know. You still scared? Oh, need your stuffed bunny, do you? Or should I read you a bedtime story? Maybe the ones with the fairies. No way. I'm not a wuss, Dad. I can sleep by myself. That's the spirit. Listen, Todd. If the Boogeyman comes to get you again, that'll beat him up. I'm not going to let anyone mess with you or mom. Because you're a police officer? Because I'm a dad. Good night, son. Should I leave the light on? It's okay. I've got you and mom. Good night. I love you. Don't blame it on the sunshine. Don't blame it on the moonlight. Don't blame it on the good times. Blame it on the boogie. Have you ever thought about it, detective? Thought you have an enemy? Who or what it is, you don't even know. Maybe it doesn't even exist. Maybe it's all in your head. But you know, there's something tormenting you. Always making it so, so painful. 
You feel like the whole world's out to make you suffer. Too troublesome to make an enemy of the whole world, right? So, just making one enemy will do. I chose you as my enemy. Have I become yours? Oh well, either way, we're gonna settle this right here. Let's end this wonderful game show. Can you beat this final boss and take back your beloved wife? Do I get a weapon? <laughs> What's so funny? Boy, you really having a blast, huh? What's so funny that you can be all smiles all the time? Total opposite of me. I don't remember the last time I laughed. But I guess we were pretty similar after all, in the sense that it was all a lie. You're always grinning ear to ear, but you're scared, aren't you? So you keep running. You can't go ahead to head with me. You and me are just acting. You're no scary monster, and I'm no paragon of justice. Final boss? Ha! A big baddie should be a pretty sly guy, shouldn't they? But taking hostages? Always on the run? The only thing you can chase after is girls' rooms. You know, I wasn't planning to do anything with you. As long as the others were safe, I was fine leaving you be. I'd secure your hostages and scram then just leave you to the local police. Because I'm not chasing you. You just keep running from me. What I'm really chasing after. Sorry. But it ain't you. That's right. It's not you. You're my enemy? Spare me the sleep talk. Why would I make my enemy a dunce who just sneaks away? A coward who hides in the closet and threatens kids? And your enemy? Not me either. I've got a lot more enemies. If you go to the slammer, you're gonna be a real popular guy, I can tell. But this is a great chance. No hostages to get in the way, no one watching. So I can do whatever I like with you. Detective? Criminal? It doesn't matter now. You've done the number one thing to get on my bad side. You chased after my wife's rump. That alone is enough reason for me to beat you down. Don't you think, Boogie? Is he pissing himself? Or is he bleeding? Can't afford to laugh anymore, can you? Back to your closet, boogeyman. You don't have what it takes to make it over here. Oh, we're gonna fight? I don't have a weapon? Is that how it's gonna be? Let's do it. Oh, crap. What? Uh, normal attack. What? That's not what I'm trying to do. Hold on. Oh, okay, it's X. Got you. Got you. Oh, you're getting stabbed. That's fine. We got this. We got this. Who's the boogeyman now? <laughs> I got this. Right, let's go. Nope, nope, nope. Stay away from me, man. Nope. All right. Do I have, like, flying fist? I feel like I have flying fist. Look at that. Nope. Nope. Ow. Ow. I almost got him. I almost got him. You're not gonna get me, Boogie. You're not gonna get me. Don't mess with my wife's room. Ow. I'm gonna get him. Ow, one more. One more. Where you think you're going, Lance? I'm gonna find them. They've been gone way too long. Did you forget what Keith said? 
It would be a burden on him to move around on our own. Well, then after all said and done, we'll tell him we did just what he said. Of course, you might all have gone stone cold by that time. Don't joke about things like that. Sounds like a joke to you. Uh, we've got two, maybe three corpses around here. What part of don't, don't you get? Stop, you two. Don't fight. We'll go search together. I'll lead the way. Sophie and Shirley, you hold hands. And Lance, you watch the rear. Papa, you really want to go? Yes, we'll be all right together. And there's something I'm curious about. What's that? The whole incident may just be a great big farce. What do you mean? Let's be going. Helena, where are you? Helena! Oh, she was locked up? I knew it! There had to be a secret passage there. <laughs> Helena! David! Are you okay? I... Th that man knocked me out. I woke up here. I was unconscious the whole time. Keith! Helena! Keith, where are you? David, slow. Always on the run, huh? But marijuana addicts can have better than you. Can move better than you. It's that big head of yours. Brendan? You lose. Detective. Keith! You're Brendan. Why? Stop moving around. Keith, Helena! We have to stop the bleeding. Lance! Richard, help me out. Sophie, find something to tie him with. Keith! <laughs> Got you. Keith, you... Elena, when we get home, let's finish our conversation. No more running. No, Keith, stay with me, please. Keith! Keith died? Come on. The servant and Stevie, 10 people died, all told. I'm sure glad to be alive now. Then glad to even have air to breathe. Yo, Dick is a dick. <laughs> He's the reason we were in that place in the <laughs> to begin with. Listen, don't you say a word about all this, especially not to your co-workers. If it takes money to shut your yap, I'll pay any price. Whoa, bribery. Where is that money coming from? My own pockets. Listen, you guys can distort the truth all you want and I won't say a peep because that's freedom of the press. But this, this is different. I've got no tolerance for people pointing and laughing at a wounded friend. Do I gotta tell you again? I'm not a gossip guy. I hate cops, sure, but I hate gossip too. I won't ask for money and I won't say a peep because I'm grateful to the guy. So quit hounding me. But, as an involved party, I've got a right to know what happened there. Just can't wrap my head around it. I talked to Brendan at dinner, heard he got tired of the musty old castle and ran to Hollywood. Had a lot of fun in the movie biz. So what was the motive? Guy's gone silent. Sounds like he convinced you he was a goody two-shoes, but I bet you'd hear a different story in Hollywood. Now that's the kind of thing you lot should be writing about. 
Everybody knows people's past, usually. But it's easy to fool you into thinking otherwise with a little acting. And once you know somebody's past, you can lead them by the nose. He tricked you all and tried to kill you. What a farce. Not sure of the motive yet, but he was pretty systematic about it all. Spent a ton of cash beforehand to check up on all toy attendees. Even did a background check on me. On you? Why? Because I was going to be on that tour. No wonder. I thought he knew me. The hell? So he just researched us? That's the oldest trick in the book for us, saying I know all about you. It makes you superior to the other person so you can control them. Then they freak out and have to submit. He knew that tactic well. Seeing right through people at any tricks. That's what makes a real monster, ain't it? In his case, he just used money and connections to dig up people's pasts and played the part of a monster. But the research wasn't to select candidates, so he just picked randomly. Damn, was he just in it for fun? Now, my turn to ask questions. What you tell me is the only way I can figure out this incident. Give me anything you got. First, Brendan, or Boogie, rather. What kind of man was he? How should I say it? I suppose he had no emotion. That's how I saw him. He said such terrifying things without care. He hardly showed any emotion or any human feelings. He really was like a monster. Keith told me he was a real jester. Jester? Absolutely not. I would have much preferred if he were at least a little silly. He was a very disturbing, terrifying man. He was totally calm as he did awful things. Richard, you seem to have a suspicion he might be Brendan. Why did you think that? When my daughter went missing and I panicked thinking that man might have taken her, Keith told me something. This was the kind of person who would show corpses as decoration, so if he did take Sophie, he'd show off, he'd show off proof of it, meaning she was still safe. Luckily enough, I didn't see them, but indeed, evidently, there were many dead bodies left around. As Keith said, my daughter hadn't fallen to his grasp. He was correct in his assumption. That made me realize something unusual about what he'd said. Keith said he saw the moment Brendan's neck snapped and his corpse was quickly dropped into the basement. Isn't that odd? Why did he quickly put Brendan's corpse out of sight? Why did he treat him differently from the other victims? Because he didn't want you investigating it. He's got some keen insight, I'll give him that. So you suspected this was a farce plotted by Brendan? No, well I just, I suggested that since Keith hadn't checked the corpse, he might still be alive. I only wanted to believe there was a chance he was alive. I had no conviction about the rest. So I didn't speak about it to Keith. I wouldn't dare risk throwing him off with my amateur opinion. Not to mention, we didn't know whether his wife was safe. Apparently, Keith saw the moment Brendan's head came off, actually. Was it a doll? Right you are. Packed with neat little blood packs, it seems. Brendan was hung upside down and had his mouth taped up, and it was dark enough to be hard to tell who's who. Just dressing him up the same way made Keith assume it was him. On top of all those flashy rave lights, he dropped the corpse down below, so it was impossible to check it closer. And since Keith saw the tour conductor killed right after that, of course he'd think Brendan was killed too. If I had said something, maybe this could have been resolved sooner. But I was paralyzed with fear. I was only worried about my daughter. Even when Keith was running all over the place for us. Don't worry about it. Keith did all that because he wanted to. That's all. He's deeply glad you're all safe. Now, little lady, can we hear from you too? Hear what? Anything. What you thought. What you noticed. Well, I knew he was a fake because I've met the real boogeyman. Ah, oh, so there is more than one. There's the actual supernatural one and then there's this dude. Okay. Sophie, stop it. Not this tale again. You know, I shouldn't even be questioning that. We did play the Sandman, so there is that. Fine, if you say so, Papa. Guess I'm not saying a word. Go ahead, please. Meeting the real boogeyman sounds pretty juicy. Can you tell me more? Maybe not really met. He just touched my shoulder, but his hand was cold as ice. Right away, I knew it wasn't human. That guy's hands were human, though. They had warmth, so I knew he was just a regular guy. Huh, so the boogeyman's hands are cold, huh? I ought to tell that to my little squirts. Anything else you noticed? I feel like you might get angry if I say this. I won't. Tell me. 
that guy had this cold and emotionless air. Like you couldn't tell what he was thinking at all. It reminded me of Mr. Keith. A little. Do you still think that way now? Not even, because Mr. Keith got really mad at me. He was like, don't worry your papa ever again. Red paint? On his face? There was nothing like that. It was all red from blood spurts, though. Really? Keith told me he wore a paper bag with weird paint on it. And one more thing. Did you see any red graffiti in the castle saying stuff about monsters or ringtones? No, I didn't. Mr. Hoover, you're colorblind if I recall. Maybe you just couldn't see the paint. Yeah, but it's white and pink and I get mixed up. I can see red just fine. Well, uh, and you miss. I saw quite a bit of the castle, but none of that. Did you hear that from the others? Don't get me wrong, I don't think you're lying. The others said they saw nothing too. But then, that makes Keith the one talking nonsense. I don't think Keith is necessarily lying. What do you mean? Because people don't always see the same things you do. He's not wrong. Thanks for the assistance, you two. Sorry about calling you in two weeks, in fact. Is not everything settled yet? The police there are in the middle of their investigation. My role is just to assist. I'm going to report your testimonies to them, and that's that. I'll be off now. Eric, take them to the entrance. When our son died, I thought my own life was over too. I couldn't think about anything. Nothing had any taste, but tears would suddenly come anyway. I don't remember anything about what I did back then, but I do remember one thing. That Keith was always at my side. When I wailed and shouted, he'd hug me, stroke my hair, say it was okay. Eventually, I adjusted to life without our son. I found I could laugh again. But when I got my own emotions back, I realized Keith had stopped laughing. I had been broken, and so had Keith. Over time, I was able to heal, but he didn't. He was still stuck in the moment of Todd's death. He was always supporting me, so he never faced up to himself. I struggled to be at least a little stronger. Next time, I would protect him, since I wanted him to laugh again. But I couldn't. I couldn't repay anything to Keith. And I realized I was a burden on him that would keep him from ever walking again. So even if we're far apart, as long as he can laugh again, then that's the best choice I can make. My wife always brings me warm milk before I go to bed. And last Father's Day, my little squirt tried cooking me a meal. I definitely don't need milk to get sleep. And the kids cooking? I'll be blunt. They <laughs> ain't good. But I'm glad for it. Usefulness and collateral don't mean a thing with this stuff. Keith didn't stay close to you expecting something in return. That's just what he wanted to do. You guys have got too much sympathy. You don't mind getting hurt for the sake of the other. But can, can't you notice that one of you being hurt hurts the other? You've just been getting more and more wounded as you go along. You're propping Keith up too, Helena. He can't fight day after day because he knows you're waiting at home. As much as I tease him about it. Don't think of yourself as baggage. Depend on him as much as you need. That's what he wants too. Keith grabbed my hand and smiled. Even though he was stabbed and wounded. And what'd he say? Got you. Because he finally got what makes him happiest. But man, too much discrepancy between you guys' testimonies and Keith's. Just how am I going to report this to the department? Hey, Helena. You went back home from the hospital today, right? Can I come talk with him now? I'm sorry. Before he goes back home, there's a place he's going to visit. And I'm planning to head there myself. Oh, okay, I thought he died. I would have been like, oh no.
teeth. I always wanted to cry like this. I never forgot about him. Not for a single day. Ever since he died, I was scared. I felt like even the slightest sign of weakness would make it all crumble. I acted like I felt nothing. Like nothing disturbed me. I thought then I... I might be able to fool everyone. Even myself. It was so stupid. I was broken a long time ago. It was all garbage. But I acted like a champion of justice. It always felt off. Whoever I was working for, I never felt repaid. When I saw you were safe, and you came up to me, finally, I felt happy again. Acting strong just made me weak. It was pointless. Todd would never forgive his father staying broken forever. Because I promised I'd protect his mom. I'll take off the blindfold. I'm gonna laugh. Even if it's a stupid TV show. If I'm pissed, I'll get mad. And if I'm sad, I'll cry. First, I guess I'll have to be counseling. There's something seriously wrong in my head. Seems like it's gonna be a busy time. It's gonna be so busy, I won't be able to do it alone. Helena, I don't think I can deal with just being a good loser. I want a chance. Let me chase after you. Let me get down on my knees. You're the only one I want waiting for me. There's no need for a chance. Didn't I tell you? Divorce or decide. I've decided, haven't you too? We only ever have one umbrella, so we hold it together. And it's fine if we get a little wet because it will soon be sunny again. Happy end, come rain, come shine. Get the good ending. Congratulations on being the boogeyman and thank you for playing this game. Additionally, so if you played the previous two games in the series. This game was fully voiced with the help of voice actors due to the author's fatigue. There's no bonus scenario, but I did receive comments from each of the actors, so take the upper door if you're interested. The Something Man series has come to a turning point. The general storyline ends in the next game. I have plans for serious and silly extra chapters afterward, so please stay. Oh, please play those if you're interested. Lastly, once more, congratulations on being the game, and thank you for playing. I'm a goat. I'm a goat. Well, first and foremost, guys, let me tell you, this was a fun, awesome game. If, oh god, what the hell is that? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> um, yeah, I, actually, surprisingly enough, I like this one just as much as the Crooked Man. Uh, not that uh, the Sandman was bad or anything. I felt like the Sandman was more on the lighter note of things, all things considered. And the thing with the thing with the Boogeyman was it kind of went back to the roots of the Crooked Man again, and it also brought back all the characters from those previous games as well. So that was pretty cool too. Honestly, I didn't think David would play such a big role in. The boogie in the boogeyman to begin with obviously if you kept them alive or kept anyone alive in the first place you know um i also was of the mind that the kid was beat by <laughs> keith uh, in the past you know i assumed he was a abusive character but he was not at all he was a very good dude um it's just that he got he got broken just like his wife after their kid died after the accident 
So it, it explains his character, explains why he's such an ass. And then, oh my god, the phone ringing, that was so obnoxious. I could not believe how annoying it was. And I, I would always go into my inventory and find there's no phone. And I'm like, what the, what the hell is ringing? <laughs> and then you learn later, it's his, uh, it's, it's all in his head because of the trauma that he was suffering from his kid and all that. And all and how it represented bad news coming every time the phone rang so i like that too there was a lot of good things about this game and most importantly like in the later half and close to the end in fact the dialogue was just so on point i loved i was so immersed in this game um by that point like uh to begin with the first half was pretty you know like most games a little slow but then it picked up right then and then it got better as we kept going further and further until the end so i enjoyed it uh, otherwise guys we got one more game left and it's known as the hangman so this will be the finale game once we get to that and if anything else thank you all for watching hope you had a good time i definitely did and you should all try this game for yourselves guys like i said if you watch it great but hey it's a lot different when you play for yourselves so if anything else guys thank you again i am pretty worn out from this game but also it was fun and we'll continue on in the next one thank you for watching